Have you ever wondered how hurricanes form? It all begins with the warm surface of the sea, which must be over 26 and a half degrees Celsius deep into the ocean. This warmth fuels the engine of a hurricane, providing the energy needed for evaporation and the birth of the storm. As the warm air rises over the ocean's surface, a low-pressure area is created. The surrounding air rushes in to fill this void, causing a drop in atmospheric pressure. It's like the Earth taking a deep breath in, readying itself for the drama to unfold. Then, there's the Coriolis effect. This is a phenomenon caused by the Earth's rotation, and it gives a spinning motion to the rising air. The spinning effect becomes more noticeable as the storm system gains strength like a dancer twirling faster and faster on a stage. The stage is now set for a storm to brew. So, we have the right conditions. What happens next? As the warm air above the ocean surface rises, it leaves behind a low-pressure area. This vacuum-like state prompts the surrounding air to rush in, causing a drop in atmospheric pressure. As this cycle continues it creates a domino effect, setting the stage for the formation of thunderstorms. Now, imagine a cluster of thunderstorms, all fueled by the heat and moisture of the warm ocean surface. These thunderstorms start to organize into a rotating system, thanks to our planet's spin, also known as the Coriolis effect. This spinning system is what we call a tropical cyclone, but it doesn't stop there. If the conditions remain favorable, this tropical cyclone can keep growing in strength and size. It intensifies, forming a calm central area known as the eye, surrounded by the eye wall, where the most intense winds and heavy rainfall occur. And there you have it, a hurricane is born. But how big can these hurricanes get? Well, let's take a journey through history and look at the top five largest hurricanes ever recorded. First on our list is Typhoon Typhoon from 1979. This colossal storm holds the record for being the largest and most intense tropical cyclone globally. It reached a peak wind speed of a staggering 190 miles per hour and boasted a massive circulation. Next we have Hurricane Patricia from 2015. Patricia made history as the strongest hurricane recorded in the Western Hemisphere. Its maximum sustained winds reached an alarming 215 miles per hour before making landfall in Mexico. Moving on to Hurricane Irma in 2017. Irma was a Category 5 hurricane with sustained winds of 185 miles per hour. This mighty storm wreaked havoc across the Caribbean and southeastern United States, leaving widespread devastation in its wake. In 2013, Typhoon Haiyan, known locally as Yolanda, struck the Philippines with sustained winds of 195 miles per hour. This resulted in one of the deadliest natural disasters in Philippine history. Last but certainly not least, Hurricane Katrina from 2005. Katrina, a Category 5 hurricane, struck the Gulf Coast of the United States, causing severe flooding in New Orleans. It quickly became one of the costliest and deadliest hurricanes in U.S. history. These hurricanes were not just large but also highly destructive. What happens when a hurricane hits land? Well, the impact can be devastating and far-reaching. The first and perhaps most visible consequence is the physical destruction. Hurricanes bring with them a deadly cocktail of storm surges, flooding and wind damage. Buildings, homes and infrastructure are not built to withstand such forces and often crumble under the intensity of the storm. But the destruction is not just physical, there's a human toll as well. Lives are lost, people are displaced and communities are torn apart. The storm surge and flooding can contaminate drinking water, leading to health crises, schools are closed, jobs are lost, and the fabric of everyday life is ripped apart. The economic losses from hurricanes can be staggering. They can run into billions and even trillions of dollars, causing significant setbacks to local and national economies. Rebuilding efforts are often slow and costly, requiring not just financial resources but also time and resilience. And then there's the recovery. After the storm has passed, communities must rebuild. This involves repairing infrastructure, providing humanitarian aid, and supporting individuals as they rebuild their lives. It's a long, arduous process that can take years if not decades. Understanding hurricanes can help us better prepare for these powerful storms. By acknowledging the potential devastation they can bring, we can develop early warning systems, build more resilient infrastructure, and ensure that communities are prepared to face the storm when it arrives.